Well, thanks for joining me again in my shop here, and I'm working on this uh, KN5 uh, radio. And uh, last video, I got the string on, which was a good thing. <clears throat> but right away, some kind of uh, breakdown type sound could be heard in the radio. Uh, crashing breakdown sound could be any one of a number of different things. And uh, I did manage to isolate it to the audio stage uh, past the volume control. So the audio stages are down in here. That's the uh, final am amplifier, audio amplifier down here. And I've replaced a number of the capacitors around it. Um, and I think, I'm not sure of this, this tube is the uh, detector tube that feeds audio to this last tube. So it could be the detector tube making that strange sound. And around there I've changed some of the capacitors out, but not all of them. i still got these two old guys here. And I've got a somewhat darkened wire-wound resistor here. Since this problem could be in the power supply. Um, so there's a few components here to be questioned. And of course the tube itself could be causing that effect. That's actually a pretty good possibility too. So we're going to turn the radio on and listen to it again and see if we can identify any better where this might be coming from. But I really think I'm on my way to changing these capacitors to eliminate them from the possibility of being the source of the problem. Okay, so everything looks safe. We have nothing connected to it at all. It's just sitting here. So let's turn it on. There we go. Now it's warming up. I'm just going to check the chassis voltage now. I have my or this radio running off of an isolation transformer, so I shouldn't really see any. Oops, bigger the devil. This is the chassis voltage. Whoa, Nelly Bell. <laughs> Where are you going, radio? There we are. Okay, back to what I was doing. <laughs> You can see there's no voltage between the chassis and ground. If there was, boy, I'd be scratching my head something crazy. So, <clears throat> now, there's the sound. What can we possibly do about that? Volume control is down. radio. That's kind of interesting. That's volume down. So, okay, can't talk with it on. Um, so what I noticed there is in phono mode where it was at first. Turning the volume had no effect on the sound it was making. Putting it into radio mode, turning the volume did change the sound, but the radio, the, the, the new sound, the new way it sounded, uh, followed the same pattern of the uh, random kind of on-off noise stuff that was going on. So that sort of suggests to me that the problem must be such that it's affecting more than one stage. Uh, in the radio, and that suggests it's it's in the B plus somehow, or in the power supply. I wonder if we can see that on a meter. It's kind of questionable. Let's give it a try though. 
always fun to try things, and in the middle of trying things, that's when you learn other stuff you never expected. Hey, that's how most discoveries are made. You're looking for one thing and find something else that's more interesting, in fact. So maybe we can do the same thing here. Okay, now let me just move the camera over here, like that. And that's so you can see this meter here. And it's on the 500 volt scale, uh, DC of course. So we're going to turn on the radio. And we're going to measure some of the higher voltages and just look and see if when that hiss occurs there isn't some jerkiness in the voltage, which I highly doubt that we'll see anything like that. But uh, hey, let's go find out. Watch that meter really carefully. Guess what? It did move. Some other weird sound just came out of it. I don't know if you heard that or not. Now it's going to go quiet. momentary oscillations. That's the radio. Where? Come on. <laughs> There's that weird squeal. That's just from having the meter connected there. Hey, why, uh, where'd the noise go? Come on. Come on, Mr. Radio, you're not helping me at all now. Don't hide away on me. I fixed it. Yep, fixed. <laughs> All it needed was a voltmeter test. this back to square one, doesn't it? Well, okay, so what have we done here? We turned the radio on its side. Turning the radio on its side. How can that possibly uh, help the situation? Hmm, well, maybe in one of the vacuum tubes, the uh, elements inside the tube have uh, shifted their position a little bit just from gravity. You know, I give that about a zero, zero chance. I don't know. Well, <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do now? I guess I'm supposed to align this radio. Boy, oh boy. Well, let's get on with that, because uh, can't do much else right at the moment. So let me, let me set up. Okay, so. <laughs> It has returned just now. Interesting. I, I set the radio back this way, and that sound has come back. You know what else? I smell ozone again. Pretty, 
pretty distinct. Ozone's not good for you unless you're in Germany. If you're in Germany, it's a it's a medical treatment. Hmm. Well, we know ozone's going to come from uh, arcing. That's quite distinct. The arcing and the high voltage, I mean, it all makes sense, right? High voltage arcs, low voltage doesn't to begin with. High voltage arcs uh, are going to lead to this kind of sound and the in the high voltage supply. I did see this funny dip on the meter there at one point. Hey, it's gone again. You almost wish it would just blow whatever part it is. Just blow it right out of there and then I can find it easy. Okay, on with the uh, <laughs> what I was doing. So I almost got it ready here. Time for a new camera angle here. It's that, in case you don't know what ozone smells like, it's the smell that comes out of an electric razor. A lot of electric razors have uh, lots of sparks in the motor, and then they generate a little bit of ozone, and of course you're holding it right up to your nose. So people have tended to smell ozone when they're using an electric razor. So, yeah. hmm, now it's all quiet again. Very unusual. Yeah, just about everything is very unusual. <laughs> uh, every every radio is different. It's, until you've done maybe 10,000 radios, then they're all the same at that point. Okay, so we'll hook up a signal generator. And I'm just going to feed this right into the uh, antenna here. Okay, now I'm going to dial. Oh, it's already on 455. Must be from where the last place was I used it. Yeah, it's already affecting the radio. There's the uh, tone from the signal generator. And the last thing I need is a uh, A meter connection. Meter connection to the audio output. Nothing on my meter here. Okay. Let me start out. Okay. So, okay, I'm back. <laughs> it just took a second in video time, took a few minutes. I had to reboot my computer to bring back my cameras back to life. There they are, working again. After I knocked everything over. Also, it didn't help much. So, I decided there's two more approaches here. Since I can smell the ozone, 
perhaps I can hear the arcing, the actual arcing itself, not not what's coming out of the speaker, but actually the arcing. And to help me with that, I have my stethoscope here. And the other one is, maybe I can see the arcing. Maybe it's somewhere where it's going to produce enough visual light that I can spot it. And I certainly can't do that now with the lights on, <clears throat> or now with the radio quiet. It's gone quiet again. The problem really does seem to come and go. So for now, we're back to doing an alignment. But I'll keep my stethoscope handy here. So we're on 455. And uh, I'm going to I'm not going to forsake the meter here. I'm going to hook up the meter. That's what I'm going to do. Get right onto the voice coil here. got to be a little bit loud here. Let's see how centered that is. I'll change the frequency generator now. It's pretty much dead on, I think. Tune the IF transformers here. Watching this meter. So I think uh, I think the ABC is giving me a little bit of trouble there. Not much difference coming in any case. I'm sure of that. making much difference but it certainly is affecting the uh, the tonal quality of the output now we got an RF tuner an oscillator and uh, probably an antenna tuner down here I'll, uh, well uh, let's see we got to go to a an antenna frequency now So it's just a loop of wire hanging near the antenna. Okay, we'll 
we'll take the frequency generator up to the frequency the radio can receive up in here and there it is six seventy okay now we'll just have to take a guess at these three guys. One of them's the oscillator. Hopefully we can spot that pretty quick. No difference there. I think one of them's the oscillator. It may not be. I don't have a schematic, so... No difference there. No difference anywhere. Working pretty good. Yeah, th this radio is in the range of it's working pretty good, except for that intermittent stuff, which now has has left the theater. I don't know what to make of that. Work for now. We can't make anything of it. So I don't think I can do any more of this radio right at the moment. Um, this radio goes in a huge cabinet. It was in a huge cabinet with the 78 record player, if you might recall. And uh, oh, you know what? Doesn't this have short weight bands? No, I don't. Yeah, I think it does. Sure it does. Okay, so great. Yeah, with a big front on it like this. Of course it does a uh, short way. So, um, there's a lot more tuning to be done here than what I've done so far. So, uh, I think maybe I'll just stop at this point. Still a mystery what the intermittent is. Smelling the ozone is a big hint. And, uh, hmm, gone away for now. I, I don't smell any ozone. I only smell it when that noise is happening. So, we'll leave it at this for now, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon. See you later.